Welcome to the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Voss, along with our good friend, Noah Storzinger, down in Kansas City again. And we have been gone for quite a while. I believe the last time we had a show was, uh, I believe, the Wolves going into the Western Conference Finals. Now, I will say this. We did not leave. You know, it wasn't, no one had to put an Amber Alert out or anything. We checked the suicide hotline or anything like that. Uh, the Wolves are out of the NBA playoffs. That's not why we were on hiatus because, you know, Minnesota fans are a little fickle at times. And so you might have thought that, you know, once the, the happy days were gone that we, we went elsewhere. But that is not the case. Uh, kind of end of the year for some, the beginning of the year for others as far as work. Uh, but we're here to... T- talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves, uh, about the Minnesota Twins, and uh, maybe a potpourri of, of certain issues that have come to light um, that maybe don't have to do with uh, with with Minnesota sports. So uh, right off the bat, it's good to be back, Noah. Good to see you. How are things? Things are good. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a little break here and there, but like you said, uh, Starting work, ending work, work is just crazy. Um, And so a little bit of a break, but um, we're still ready to talk some sports. So, um, okay, yeah. Well, yeah, let's just get into it with the Minnesota Timberwolves. You know, I think our last podcast, we were very pleased with ourselves about beating Denver. uh, And really, I I was not necessarily concerned about Dallas, at least – the way that it did go. Uh, but your thoughts right off the bat uh, about the Dallas series. Um, I mean, obviously frustrating. I think, you know, I think we all went in thinking that was probably best case scenario, not having to face OKC getting Denver or uh, uh, Dallas, who I thought just didn't, didn't match up well with, with the wolves, especially with our size. Um but, but I think we ran into a hot team, like a very hot team that was just playing really well. Um, and I think it showed you maybe the you couldn't guard both Luka and Kyrie when they were absolutely on fire. Um, right. And I think that's just what you ran into. I think we are still the better team. Um, but I think, you know, sports, it's, it's game. Basketball is a game of runs, too, and it's, it's teams that are hot are going to win. Um, and so I think we just ran into a, to a hot team, unfortunately. Yeah. Until, you know, the last week and a half, then they, then they were not the hot team, but, exactly. um, you know, it, it, it's, it was a great run for the Timberwolves. Um, we had always talked about whether or not, you know, a season is, is considered successful, uh, or if it is, you know, and, and I, I've got to believe that this year, um, be, because it was so fun. I mean, we had a lot of moments this year with the, with the Wolves. Uh, we won two playoff series, which doesn't ever happen in Minnesota. Um, and so I, I've got to say that, that it, to me, that this was a, a success as long as we keep it going. And I want to, I want to get into that in a little bit, but first of all, let's talk about Dallas. Um, the one thing that I, I thought was evident in this series um and I think that Anthony Edwards even commented on it was they ran out of gas and it didn't matter if you had legs that were 22 years old or 25 years old or whatever it was. Um, they just looked like they didn't, they didn't have it in the tank any longer defensively. Um, offensively, they looked absolutely confused. Um, you know, and, and so you know, that's disappointing, but I think Edward said it. He was like, I've never played basketball this this deep into the season. And he said right off the bat, I'm going to take it. Conditioning is going to be different. Now, I don't know what that looks like for him because he's playing in the Olympics in, in another month or so. So I, I don't know how that definitely looks, but I do think that fatigue was a, a big factor in this, in this series. And I think that ended up biting Dallas uh, in, in the finals. They looked like they were gassed uh, in the finals. And, you know, we, we talk about uh, a team that has to, you know, have the, the building blocks or they have to have that, that, that block they can jump off of to, to get to the finals. And I think that this is one of those blocks that, that they achieve that. Um, and, and now it, it, it's one of those things like, uh, you know, you, you don't feed a baby, 
steak right off the bat, you know, right? He, he's got to work up to that. And that that's what I got to look at is that maybe we were not ready for uh, the Wagyu quite yet. Uh, that, that was quite evident in the series. Yeah, I, I was going to bring that up too. Of, of I, Like I said, I think we were the better team, hands down. Um, but I think fatigue was such a big one where, I mean, I, I don't know. I'd have to look at how many of these guys had played past the conference finals at, at this point or even the conference finals. I think Mike Conley was maybe the only one. I, I can't remember if Rudy Gobert got there. Um, but, you know, I – I think some people had complained of, you know, well, why, why didn't they just condition to, to reach that point? But I, I don't think people realize how, how taxing the playoffs are when you're right. playing, right. playing, you know, winner go home basketball. So much. And that Denver series, I think just completely, they gave it everything during that Denver series and then immediately had to play, play Dallas. So yep. um, I don't think people realize how, how taxing of, of series they are. Um, and I think really, experience is what puts you over that hump or, or that, that building block, as you mentioned, um, because I think, yeah, like this is, this is the perfect, the perfect spot for them to, to build off of next year, because literally the next building block is the finals. Um, I, I you, got a, a yeah. bunch of, you got a whole team that, that now has this experience of, of getting far deep in the playoffs and they're all young. And and I think that's, that's a positive. Okay, and that that I, I want to get to that in a second. Um, you know, let's not let's not forget that the series really wasn't as it was closer than a four one series as well. You know, and like I mean, I I, I went to game two. Uh, no, I, I went to a wrestling at the American Legion in St. Paul for game two, and I I I spent most of the night being able to dodge a score, but about. I don't know, an hour and a half in the game. I heard the Wolves are up by 16. I had it taped when I got home. Um, I get home and I'm, you know, as a true Minnesota fan, I'm like, I, I just got to get to where we're up by 16. Then I can watch it fresh, you know. And then, of course, what happened happened. My power had gone out for that game, so I didn't even know if I'd be able to watch the game. Now, because my power went off, there were glitches in me watching game two where it would freeze for just a second. And I'm not making this up, no. So I'm watching this. We're up by two. And Luca takes that shot, and it freezes right as the ball is leaving his hand. And he's already skating backwards. Like, you can already see him go heading backwards. And it just froze. And I'm like, oh, that ball's in. And it had hardly left his hand. And I'm like, no. And we still had a chance to win that. We, we should have at least split games yeah. one and two. But we easily could have won both of those games. And, I mean, that's – what happens when you you have players that are hot that just can't miss, you know? And man, that that's frustrating though because you watch them against Boston and you were like, okay, for the last week and a half, all I've been doing is praising Dallas and about how Luca can walk on water. And then you watch this like that finals. I couldn't. I think I watched maybe one, maybe two games because it just was not interesting at all. They got their ass kicked. And and like I say, I think they they got tired down down the way as well. But but uh, I would have thought the Wolves would have given the Celtics a way better series than that. Even could have maybe beat them. Well, and you know this was the least watched finals I think in the past ten years or so. Um, because look, that that was a disgusting finals. Like you knew who you knew who's going to win right away. Like I'm sorry, there was. Hands down in my head, I said, Dallas might get a game. They might. Yeah. And they did. They, they got one pretty handily, but um, that, that was a series you knew who was going to come out on top. Really the whole season, I think you had thought Boston was going to win it. I know. Except that we talked about well, a Minnesota Boston matchup thinking, and, Oh, well that's pie in the sky, but it, it was, it was that close. No. And, and, and I honestly think, that it would have gone seven games had the Wolves, maybe not. Maybe they would have been totally torched at that point. But I do. I think the Wolves would have given them a better series. I think it would have been a, a way better series. I think you would have seen the the fatigue a little bit probably. But, I mean, maybe riding on the high that it's the finals is is a little different. But um, it would have been so much better. And, and I think there was a big reason why it was the least watched finals in the last 10 years is because no one wanted to see the Dallas Mavericks in the 
in the finals. Right. Boston, right. sure. And I'm sorry, but if Minnesota goes, like, it's like when Milwaukee was in the finals. You're like, that's yeah. a finals I watch because I'm like, God, when have the Bucks? When was the last time the Bucks were good? Um, right. Watching a finals, and 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 you had you had a lot of the country behind Minnesota right, through this playoff series, which was really cool. And I think they would have lasted through the finals. I th- I think that the NBA would have preferred a Minnesota Boston uh, NBA finals. I I think that the ratings. Well, they would have been a lot better than what what they were. Now, I think Boston really matched up well with Dallas, and I think that that was one of one of the big deals. Now, um, I, I can't use this as my own, but it, it made so much sense. I mean, I'm watching the Dallas series, and I'm watching Luca, and I'm watching for the most part. I, I guess he played defense the other night for a little bit of a little bit of time, uh, maybe game four. Um, but I mean, I watched him against the Wolves. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, he hasn't played defense. His offense consists of him standing almost out of bounds and then catching the ball and shooting, and it's nothing but that. I mean, and, and like I say, this is not mine, but it made it, it registered so much with me. I mean, Luca is like that guy you play pickup basketball with on Saturday morning, you know, and he, he walks in the in the gym with a beer in his hand, but yet he was out drinking all night, Friday night, and then drops 40 on your ass, and you're like, what and you know, just that kind of that smugness that he's got to him just makes you so angry that he can burn you in, in the way. And he did. He torched us, man. And I was like, wow, that guy. And so here I'm building him up as like, like I say, the second coming and then nothing in the finals. No, and, and that's what's frustrating is you'd see him put up these these shots that he was just not missing, not missing yeah. in the Western he was Conference. like two for 21 last night. Right. And, and it's, you're just like, where the, where the hell was this <laughs> when you played us? Right. And I get it. It's, and we'll chalk it up as a minute. Oh, it's cause he played the Timberwolves. No, I mean, it, it happens, but um, no, you, you know, the guy didn't play defense and maybe a little bit, but uh, he, he traditionally doesn't at all. He does not play defense. And, and I was a little frustrated. I think after watching Boston absolutely hammer him with isolations, with switching, with just making him tr- making him try to be active in the defense, but obviously he's not, so it's an easy bucket. And I question a little bit, like, where where was this right. for Chris Finch and, and, well, and the crew? And, and there was a lot of, a lot of things that, that really upset me. And like I say, this might go just with growing pains um, with the Minnesota Timberwolves. I mean, you're – your defensive player of the year did not show up. I, like he, he didn't show up since his kid was born. I'm sorry, man. Like he, he really didn't. Um, you had another guy, you know, Alexander Walker, who, who didn't show up since game two of the Denver series, you know, Edwards, like I say, I think fatigue uh, played a part, but you know, he, he was responsible for some huge swings by turning the ball over at the worst possible times at the end of halves, at the end of games, whatever it is. And here's the other thing, because this is going to be my, my bridge into the next, the next topic. Like I had defended Carl Anthony towns the entire season. Okay. Um, but man, what a time for him to absolutely lay a, a, a huge shit burger, man. Like he did not show up and it, it was, it wasn't, a case of like, wow, shots aren't just dropping for him. He just did not play smart basketball. And that's the knock I've always had on Towns. Um, but man, there were there there were like the silly fouls, the the shooting that that didn't make any sense as far as the, the shot selections, um, the out of control. It it just it it you know, it's too bad, but I'm still gonna defend him because here is what I want to bridge into. Um, like I say, we are, I think, close to at least being able to imagine an NBA championship in in Minnesota. I really believe that, but that means that I believe that you need to maintain the team that you have right now. Okay. And I, you know, I, I brought that up. I think podcast ago, let's not trade Tom Bernanski for Tommy Herr, who didn't even want to be here. Well, that's all fine and good. That was after we won a world series, but I'm going to still defend towns. There is no reason 
to bring someone else in to try to figure out with Gobert right now. And if you can get it, you know, and I guess this comes to ownership, but if you can get it done where you can pay these guys and you're just going to say, look, we're, we're going to, we're going to take the fall on this. I believe you have to keep this team intact, right? A hundred percent need to run it back next year. A hundred and ten percent. You might lose Kyle Anderson, but that's fine. But look, the, these are two guys that it already took a year to figure out. And then they yep. figured it out. And you were one of the best teams in basketball and made it to the Western Conference Finals. Why would you change it? Why? Right. It, it, so, it, it took one bad series. I get it. But that's their, their owners that or, or GMs that do these overreactions every year when one guy has a bad series in the playoffs. And obviously people are going to call for people to be traded when the lights are, are that bright in the playoffs. But, but again, like, they made it to the Western Conference Finals. What and it's and I think that you go with that same that same core. And like I say, it seems that they're comfortable playing um, with with the group that we've got. Obviously, you're going to have to address uh, a point the point guard position. At but I say you got to you got to stick. I think with Towns at at this point. And and let me let me throw out something. This is how crazy it's gotten because this is the one that I heard. Durant for Towns. Okay, but no, wait. It was Durant for Towns, Walker, and Nas Reed, which makes absolutely no sense. And like I say, to, to figure out, but I don't even know if I would take Durant for Towns straight up at this point. I, I would not want Kevin Durant on my on No, my team. no. And, and that's what I mean. And like, I'm hoping that, that, Conway is going to, is going to figure, I mean, he's a very, very intelligent man. He knows basketball. Like I say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Do not mess with this at this point. Um, because I, I think if you choose to keep this, like, and that's going to take a commitment and nobody knows where the ownership is going. If, if you got Lori and a rod making the decisions, I think that they are going to do what's best for this team if you have glenn taylor calling the shots i don't know man i really don't now the twist to that is supposedly when Lori and and uh and mark or when mark and uh alex take over supposedly they want to get under the luxury tax which would mean shedding one of a rudy a cat uh Whoever, it would probably be one of those two. And so the difference is Glenn Taylor, I believe, wants to keep this core intact. So now you've okay. got fans kind of doing this, wondering. But but at the same time, I said, you know, it seems like Rodriguez and, and Lori want to bring a championship here. And if they were a little smart, I think they would realize this is probably the best move to keep this core together. And we can figure out financials later. Now, would they try to get under the luxury tax because they have this proposed site for a new stadium and they're thinking down the road that way? I mean, um, because, I mean, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's still people saying they ain't got the money. So, you know, when I hear you say something like that, I, I, I guess I get concerned, but yet I really appreciate I think what those guys have brought to this organization so far. It, it's been, I mean, it, look, ever since they joined, we, what, back-to-back -back playoff appearance, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back playoff appearances? Um, so when was the last time you could say that right. about the Timberwolves? Um, now, did you see who they just brought in? The, I did not. So, uh, Michael, Michael? Uh, Bloomberg from New York. Oh, yeah, 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 I did, yeah. The 12th richest man in the world. Yep. Like they were talking about, I think Mr. Kraft owns the New England Patriots. Like when they were talking about how much he's worth and he's like on the list of like 276, the down the line and Bloomberg is 12th. Like, yeah. right. Uh, so they yeah. have the money. <laughs> well, now is that confirmed that he is, because what is that going to mean for the Wolves then if, if he gets involved? I mean, he was a, he's a part owner. I think the difference is, I mean, I, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know if it's more of a, Hey, this is a, we just need money 
and this will make you money type of thing. We don't really need you to, I don't even know if he wants to be involved in right business well, decisions, but here's the deal. If you get him involved though, I mean, shoot, we're going to have home games on Mars. That's how much money that guy's got, you know? So like, it, I mean, I, I don't know. That's, that's, that's interesting. And then I, I do believe that, Talks of a new stadium being built will will actually be put in put in progress. Sounds like it's it it's something that they've wanted ever since they got here, um, which is fine. I mean, truthfully, now Target Center is the second oldest arena now in the NBA, which is really hard to believe. Um, I like the the friendly confines of of Target Center. Um, I think it looks a lot nicer now, but um, I'd be open to a new stadium. Right. Right. And they, well, they've already got the land picked out and uh, my buddy Perm did predict where they were going to, where they were going to look for land before it was actually announced. So, all right. Uh, anything else on the, on the Timberwolves? I think we, we kind of covered, covered what we wanted to, maybe not with the, uh, maybe not with the emotion or the intensity that during, during the, 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 the Western conference finals, but anything else you want to want to want to go with uh, on that? No, I think uh, maybe in the next episode or, or whatnot, we start talking Wolves' future because I think the draft is coming up here soon. Yeah. Um, and, they, I mean, the offseason And they starts. actually have a first and a, a, a second round that's pretty high up, right? Like they, they tw- like they pick like 27th and 34th or something like that, like right? I, yeah, we have we don't have our own second round pick, but we have the pick from the Grizzlies or, or one of the Grizzlies right. or Wizards, one of those two. So, um, and we the interesting part is we we can trade we can't trade that first round pick; it's protected up until draft day. Right. So I'm curious if you know I there's not really the need for a rookie uh, on this team. So I'm curious if uh, if Conley wheels and deals a little bit on draft night. So now. We're going to stick with basketball, but now, and we don't, we try to stay away from the controversial stuff, but, but, you know, I, I feel that we do need to talk about this a little bit um, because of how ridiculous it is. And uh, we have always said, keep your politics out of my sports, but you know, everybody's got an agenda. Have you been following this whole Caitlin Clark stuff that's been going on? What, what are your thoughts right off the bat? Well, here's what I've been following or, or what I've, what I have watched, because I'll be honest, I have not watched a, I've not watched a WNBA game this year yet. Yep. Um, but I'll tell you what I have watched is their most exciting player in league history. Just get the shit kicked out of her every game, every yep. game. Um, and it's, it's ridiculous. This is the one female. I'm sorry, Angel Reese. I'm sorry. Uh, what was it Cameron Brink? Caitlin Clark is the one female that is letting you fly private. That is bringing celebrities to your games. That is filling your arenas. Stop. He ain't lying. Now, I, I find it interesting because I guess if it was if, if it was just what what you're saying because we yeah, have we've seen we've seen the clips. Um, what the thug love, uh, Kennedy Carter from the Chicago sky cheap shot. There, there were a number of things that were disappointing about that. That particular play was not only that it was not a flag runner. I think maybe they gave her one after, after the game because people were pissed off or whatever, but, um, was not only did she get hugged when she got back to the bench by her teammates, like she had, just scored 30 points. Uh, but what I was disappointed by was Caitlin Clark's teammates ain't got her back, man. Like they just walked, like stepped over her and did not like, like, and to me, that's kind of your meal ticket. Now you brought up a bunch of points that I, I do want to touch upon because um, I'm sorry, ladies, you can't have it both ways. Um, there, there are so many things that, that are going on right now for the WNBA that is exciting if you are a WNBA player, coach, fan, woman, whatever, right now, okay? And so I, I don't understand why you're, you're finally – because for years the WNBA has complained about, 
We don't get the same kind of treatment. We don't get the same kind of TV deals. We don't get it. Well, right, because you're not drawing the same kind of, I'm sorry, it still comes down to, to being a business, but complain so much about it. Uh, but you finally have a, somebody right now who's taken, at least taken it. And, you know, I love Maya Moore, but she winning championships here never took it to that level where the whole country was talking about women's basketball. You finally have someone that's doing that right now. And she's not, no, she ain't, she ain't breaking any major records right now. She had a good game, I believe on Sunday, uh, but she's going to have her lumps, but yeah, the lumps are going to come as, as a rookie. I don't understand trying to go so much out of your way to diffuse that because guess what? You know, Angel Reese has won more national championships than Caitlin Clark, but 20 years from now, God willing, if I'm still around watching basketball, I guarantee that if I look back to 2024, I'm not going to probably be thinking about Angel Reese. Okay. And so for, for her to say, well, they're here to watch me too. Well, maybe, maybe not, but not at, at the same level. And so you're finally, your league is getting some kind of recognition and everybody is fighting that. Can somebody explain that to me? Well, and I don't, I don't, I don't know because it, it just seems like everyone's trying to give her this welcome to the league, um, welcome to league uh, fouls and, and, and just kind of drop her down a bit. But look, I, I just don't get how I get, maybe there's some jealousy involved um, oh, when you've been playing, when you've been playing for so long. And, and, and I don't like, I'm not going to blame them for, for being jealous because I probably would be too, but this is the person that is filling your arenas and you, you don't have to fly commercial anymore. Um, now you're flying private. You're, you know, you've got people actually talking about your sport, um, play competitive for sure. But there's a, you can tell when there's a level of, okay, now you're just being a dick, um, uh, because you're jealous. Okay. And jealous is a great word because, you know, I don't want, you know, I, I don't want to be canceled, you know, but it, it does. It reminds me of so many of my, my friends, wives or, or girlfriends, as soon as they meet a chick, man, like, and, and these are like women that don't have a lot of female friends at all. But as soon as they meet said, Oh, and this is my friend. Uh, you know, she, I work with her, whatever. I don't like her. <laughs> well, you don't even know her, you know? And, and so I find probably basketball is a little bit different but it reminds me of that kind of deal. And I guess when, when I said about politics being out of the sport, you know, like I had this conversation even before the Caitlin Clark thing, because now everybody's talking about it. everyone is okay. And I brought it up when, when Charles Barkley um, mentioned it, I think it was maybe, I don't think the wolves had, had lost the series yet, but Charles Barkley made a point. He was like, one of the two best, players in the, in basketball right now are two slightly overweight white boys. Okay, fine. Great. You know what I mean? And like when, when I talk, I talked to my good friend Connor about this while, while this was going on, I'm like, you know what? If anybody needs to make it about race, fuck out of here. All right. Get the fuck out of here because, and, and we've seen it before. We've seen it with, I remember when I was in high school, Dennis Rodman called out Larry Bird and said, if, if Larry Bird was a was a black man, he would just be an average NBA player. And Dennis Rodman went on to say, if I was white, I would be at Larry Bird's status. Sorry, buddy. Ain't going to happen. All right? You are not the same player as Larry Bird. My point was, who gives a fuck if he's black or white? Okay? Same deal with the jealousy that comes in the WNBA. Is like, well, the only reason she's getting this is because she's a white girl. So would it matter if she was from fucking Serbia? I mean, I, you tell me what, what's the answer to that? Because if we are only going to focus on things like that and the game is so universal nowadays, my friends. So if Caitlin Clark was from Brazil, would there be all this jealousy, animosity? Would everybody be going, Oh, well, it's just another, you know what? Everyone shut up and fucking play basketball. That's all I want. All right. And we're going to get to the whole 
disparity, whatever, women versus men, whatever. But your thoughts on that, because I, I don't get why you bring race into this. And it's gotten to a point, and I will go on record as saying this, Noah, that that word has been thrown around so much, racism, that nobody knows what the fuck it means anymore. Honestly. All right? It, 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 the word has lost its meaning. But look, like, Caitlin Clark is the reason she's getting all this attention, um, all the media, all the whatever. Look, she's good at basketball, and she's a good person. That, that they, Look, LeBron James is good at basketball, so he gets a lot of media attention. He's black. Right. He's not right. white, right? Like, like he's she is she's the best player in the WNBA. I'm sorry, she's a rookie, but she is. Uh, it, she's got the best awesome. skill. I think, I think got you beat on that one. It, it doesn't matter. She she still has a lot to prove in the WNBA and internationally, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, but I I just I can't believe you know that there there are haters in in that in that fashion. And even I got to call out Cheryl Reeves of the Minnesota Lynx because she was bitching about Caitlin Clark on opening night. Where, well, the, the Lynx one, I, I can't believe that the NBA network put all this hype on Caitlin Clark's first game. I'm sorry. Did anybody really care across the country what the Minnesota Lynx did in their first game? Can you even remember who they played? I can't. I, I just found out that they're second in the league or first in the league. Yeah, they're first in the West. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to get to that. Cheryl Reed, if it wasn't for the NBA, the WNBA would not even be around. That has been proven, okay, is only because the teams, well, except for the Connecticut Sun and the Seattle Storm are supported by the NBA franchises. So Caitlin Clark gets left off the Olympic team. I don't have a big deal with that. That's fine. I mean, even the dream team had Christian Leitner, but there are probably a lot of deserving players in the WNBA that deserve to go over Caitlin Clark. You're not trying to put, it's the Olympics. You're not trying to, oh, we got to get people in to watch USA women's basketball. No, they've already got that, whether Caitlin Clark's going to be there or not. So it doesn't matter. But to me, I, I don't understand why Cheryl Reed is so anti Caitlin Clark when she, you know what? They had their biggest attendance the other night, 8,000 people. Guess what, Cheryl? The Target Center holds a little bit more than that, okay? And this is a first place team. I watch on Sunday, I'm like, oh, the WNBA game of the week is on. Indiana, Chicago, ooh, these are, this is going to be a rivalry for years and years to come. And guess what? I look at it, and it's a four and seven team playing a four and eight team. Okay, and that's the game of the week. All right. I looked at the standings the other day. Out of the twelve teams, four teams have a winning record. All right. So now that you have somebody, or at least someone is gives a fuck and is talking about what you have wanted forever, you're gonna try to douse that. You're gonna you're gonna throw water on that fire. It makes no sense to me because they all want credit too. Angel Reese is a big one saying, well, it's not just one person that's bringing media attention and, and, and all this to, to the WNBA. And, and look, I'll give you a little credit because there was some, some stuff around your name and, and you're, you're a good ball player. But um, look, the way I found out about you was because you were talking shit to Caitlin Clark. Like that's how right. I, the world found out about Angel Reese. Um, and there, there are a lot of great women basketball players that play in the WNBA and before that. Uh, I'm sorry, man. Uh, Reggie, did you know Reggie Miller? I'm sorry. I, I fucked that up. I, it was a Seinfeld reference, but I was supposed to say Cheryl Miller's little brother used to play basketball. Cheryl Miller was my favorite women's basketball player of all time. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of women that came through that league. You could even go back to Katie Smith, who held the record for most scores point, most points scored in the WNBA. All right, but none of them that put them, even like Maya. I'm sorry, I love Maya Moore. She was the Michael Jordan of the WNBA to me, and won championships, but never put them on that level where everybody was talking about. Now everyone's talking about them. So fuck out of here because I I, I don't. 
I, I guess I, I just don't understand the conversation we're having. And now it's got to be racial. So let's divide the country a little bit more so that nobody can enjoy what sports are all about. Exactly. I mean, let's just like, I hate to shut up and dribble thing, but I mean, really like, let's just fucking watch basketball. Like it was supposed to be like, let's just watch, let's watch some basketball. Um, it's the best time for the WNBA. Let's stop being fucking jealous and let's just be happy for this league that has been wanting this for so, so fucking long. Right. And, and, you know, I, I want to go, cause I do want to, uh, pay homage to, to them, but I mean, it's, it, it's a conversation that's gone on for, for a while in, in the NBA, but it's like, you know, when Barkley said that about, uh, he was referring to Luca and, and to the Joker as being the, you know, the two best ball players in the NBA and they happen to be slightly overweight white boys. Now they're from Europe, so you can't hold their whiteness against them. But, um, you know, I, it, it reminded me, um, I would say this was about 25 years ago. I was at a work, um, I was at work and three guys were talking basketball guys. I always talk basketball with, and, uh, and they, all three of them happened to be African-American. I was the only white boy came in, came into the conversation and, um, they're like, Johnny, you got to come in. Here's the question. Uh, who's better Michael Jordan or Jerry West? And, and here I thought, oh, I'm just getting pulled. They, they, they know what I'm going to say. And then I'm thinking what I should say or what I didn't, I spoke from the heart and I said, Michael Jordan, because that's the guy that I watched in my life. I didn't watch Jerry West, uh, <clears throat> in his prime, but I wasn't fishing. Like I wasn't trying to be accepted by the African-American community by picking Jordan over, um, Jerry West. But the response I got was was amazing because it, it wasn't what I was expecting. I went on my whole tirade about MJ and the and the the biggest comeback was Jerry West is the logo, dude. He's the logo. And and there are two of the two of the three guys I talked to were were wanted Jerry West hands out. Now I don't like comparing one player to another and saying he's the be better player, whatever Jerry West was the only, I believe, NBA finals MVP that lost. Uh but it's my whole deal. At the end of the day, we went back to what play uh, talking basketball that didn't have anything to do with Larry Bird or fucking Jerry West or Dennis Rodman or anybody, a uh, Delonte West. Remember that guy? Uh, it, it didn't have anything, and that's what I see now with the NBA. With the NBA, okay. Dallas was the, 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 the flavor of the month when they beat the wolves, but then they got spanked by Boston. No one talking about white versus black any longer, nor, nor should they, it, it, it just, I, I don't know. I mean, stop me if I'm wrong and, and I'm like barking up the wrong bush here, but it, it just pisses me off that that's gotta be a focus of watching sports. I think it pisses everyone off now and no one knows who to, who to, shut up anymore because that's all I see. Like, like I said, I see it on Twitter. So I'm just scroll through and it's people frustrated and I don't know who, I don't know who's on the WNBA side. You know what I mean? Where they're like, Oh, I, I, I respect what they're doing to Caitlin. Like I, I, I agree with everyone else. Right. I think everyone's pissed and everyone's like, what the fuck are we doing? Well, we just figure it out. only got to be the white people probably. Um, which I, you know, I mean, I, and I, I I'm sorry. I, you know, I, I, I don't want to make it that, but like, th that's, that's what it's come down to. I mean, um, I'm seeing this as being one of the top stories on Fox news. Well, then, you know, that it's all fucked up. You know what I mean? So it's just, all right, let's, let, I, I was just curious about that because, you know, not to, like I say, we don't want to get canceled, but we may we may go down this road in a little bit, but let's get back to Minnesota sports. Uh, the Minnesota Twins. Uh, I uh, I actually got to watch them play the other day. I, I saw the opening game uh, against the uh, what are they the the Kansas City, Oakland, Sacramento, Las Vegas Athletics. Uh, I believe what the the Sacra Sacra Vegas Land. Athletics, right? Something like that, yeah. Dude, Noah, you talk about bad time, hard times. 
me and my buddy, I, I went to the game where they were looking at the roster and, and Rooker was the only one uh, that I, I knew who he was. Like he was, it was a scene out of major league. He, he ran down all the names on the team. And I was like, who are these fucking guys? You know, like I, I didn't understand any of the guys on that team, but uh, twins playing good baseball right now. Yeah. Yeah. They're uh, well, I don't know if you're, you take, I guess you didn't take the game cause we can't watch the game. Nope. Uh, they're down four, nothing right now at Tampa Bay at, at the time of recording. Um, oh, thank you. Know, though, so. Thank you, Pablo Lopez. Um, yeah. Happy Pablo day. Jesus Christ. Um, hey, hey, don't blaspheme though. Uh, I did not know. I I'm guessing that that game is going to get, uh, they're not going to conclude it because there are tornadoes in the, in the, uh, in the area. But, um, you know, I mean, you know, I brought up Oakland. It was a, it was a series that I was like, well, no, it's a 10 game homestand. You have to win all four. And I had buddies that were like, come on, Johnny, it's, it's hard to win four games, even in major league baseball. You know, I'm like, no, they ha they have to do it because if, if you don't, the teams like Cleveland, I'll even say Kansas city right now, you might split at home you're not gonna so you got to take advantage you know and tampa is in last place in the east but i think only two games under 500 um these are games you have to win yeah you know oakland i think for sure you know i was like you know i'd be happy with three of four but i think you need to take two or three from tampa and then you go to oakland after after this series you got to take all three i'm sorry yep. like I agree. you gotta um but no, I mean, playing good ball. Um, the offense is getting better. Royce Lewis is a, just a, a freaking stud. Yep. Um, yep. Pitching has yep. been better. And, uh, you know, right now they're the third in the wild card. So certain trying to get well, up to. You know, and it's interesting. They're only five and a half out um, right now. And, and you do wonder, you brought up Royce Lewis. You do wonder uh, if it would have been different had he been healthy now, um, you know, yeah, I still read the paper, so I, I read about it, but because I, I can't hear what's what's his name, Corey Provis. I, I don't know what he says uh during during the telecast, but everybody was waiting for the big three to get together, right? Correa, Buxton, and and Lewis, Buxton being the less of all three. Uh, but they finally no, stop me when I say something wrong. Uh they they are together and I don't know if it if it's Royce joining the ball club, but you see that Carlos is hitting the ball, man. And I mean, I was there for game one of the Oakland series where I think he had six, he was six of seven at one point uh, in at bats. And like, it just took off from there. He hit two home runs in a game. And do I think that Royce is that infectious on, on the clubhouse? I've got to say, yeah, I think so. Right. You, you see it. I mean, at least the videos I watch, cause obviously I can't watch the games. Um, but you, you see it in the interviews, in the, the videos, uh, or, or, you know, he, he just brings a different vibe to the clubhouse. I think he's just, he wants to win, but I God, this guy, I, when do you see him sad or, or, or just I, down on himself? I mean, this guy could go over four, four K's. He'd be smiling like that. That's, I, that's yeah. what the guys you love to play with. I think I heard, uh, I don't know. Was it Joe Schmidt? Somebody said he, that they interviewed him right after he hit that home run in Kansas city. When he, you know, at that point you didn't know if the season was done. He's like, no, did you see? I hit a home run though today. Like, and, and I, I've got to believe that about him because we've said this before. It's not fake. I, I haven't seen anything that's fake about this young man. And now, uh, well, he's the first Minnesota twin to hit seven home runs in his first 12 games of the season. I, you know, like you just expect them to hit a home run every game that he comes to the plate. Right. And, and so, um, it, it's interesting because I, I read uh, a column that I think it was, uh, it was maybe Sue Ann. And I had been saying this for a while. Uh, that Minnesota is is very fortunate right now because you have out of the big four, and we've mentioned this on the show before, right? You have out of the, out of the big four professional teams here, on three of the four, you have one of the top, at least top three in the game playing that sport. 
All right. You got Edwards with the, with the wolves. You have Jefferson with the Vikings. Uh, you have, you have Royce Lewis and you've got it because he's going to rewrite the record books, you know, and then you've got Capri soft with the wild who I wouldn't put at that echelon yet. And the, the whole article was who, who do you think is the best out of those four? And to me, Royce Lewis is the sky. I mean, Edwards, Jefferson, how do you even measure all three of them? Right. I, I, I don't know because I, I think for me, I gravitate towards baseball, basketball more. And so I think either Edwards or Royce is up there. Royce has become my favorite ball player yeah. in, in the game. Like yep. he is yep. just yep. like, I, I, I rarely, I mean, I was, I was a Joe Maurer fan. I was, and after that, I, I wouldn't say I had a favorite ball player, uh, especially when he started to, the trajectory of Joe Maurer's career started to tail yeah. off a bit. But Royce Lewis is, is by far my favorite, favorite ball player. And, and, and it's by a and mile. Think of, and think of what we haven't even seen from him yet because of uh, the baseball gods that were so cruel to him. Um, I'd say Albert Pujols, Tory Hunter were probably my my favorite my my favorite personal uh, players in, in, in Major League Baseball, um, but I would say that Royce is is is, is climbing that ladder very very quickly. Um, and you know you gotta you gotta wonder now what what they are gonna do if they if they truly have now I hear Walner is that he's on a tear in St. Paul that he may be back soon. Um, you just wonder what the season would have been like had he been healthy the whole year, because I do think that, that he does impact uh, the players in the clubhouse. I agree. I, I think the hard part was you, you've got a lot of rookies on, on this ball club that, that performed really well last year. And unfortunately like that sophomore slump is, is real. Um, and, and, and they're all feeling it right now. Walner, uh, Eddie's feeling it. Um, and, and, so I don't know. The offense took a, an interesting shift. The pitching has been interesting. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 obviously not like the ball club we had last year, but I think we're starting to hit the hit the point where everyone's kind of figuring out what we're doing. Um, you know, when it comes to the offensive game plan, or or um, Rocco's still trying to figure out some, some pitching, and I think it's. The pitching side, I think, is where I worry probably more. I think people would say the offense, but I think for me, it's the it's the pitching. This is I not agree. a playoff. I agree. This is not a playoff pitching staff. I'm and I, I would say, I I would say that would apply more to the bullpen than it would the the starting rotation. See, I think I disagree in the sense of you had you had Pablo and you had Sonny who could who could get you through. Um, starting pitching becomes more and more important in the postseason and the bullpen does too, but I think you can piece together a bullpen more than what this starting rotation is because as of right now, look, Pablo ain't going game one. Joe Ryan would probably go game one, but he's still got home run issues pitching really well this year. Yeah. He's, yep. but do you expect him to give you a performance like Sonny did or Pablo did last year? But after that game too, I mean, you're right. You ain't thrown Chris Paddock. Bailey over has right. been bad. Yep. Um, so, yep. so what do you do? I mean, you have to, you have to add at the deadline, right? Okay. I, well, th that's going to be interesting. You know, and th that depends on who you're, you're, you're willing to give up probably at, at deadline time. Um, you know, because I, I think that you're talking about just renting for half a season right now, right? You're not looking at down the road. Why not? I mean, they, Paddock, Paddock's been interesting. I don't know what his future looks like. I think he's a better bullpen piece. Louis Varlin, uh, well, he pitched a little better uh, recently and then gave up the game the other day. But um, I think he's a bullpen guy. I, I think there, there are pieces in this rotation that they expected to be here longer that, I, you know, why not give up a little extra to get a guy who you might have a little more control of? Okay. Control of? What what do you see by by All Star break? You know because Cleveland has played incredible baseball as well, but there are a lot of teams in the American League that are playing really well. You know we brought up the Rays; they're in last place and they're only two games under five hundred. 
You know what I mean? Which uh, in the, in the, I guess in other divisions, they, they might be contenders. Uh, what do you see? Where do you see the twins by all-star break? And do you see Royce Lewis in the home run derby? Royce would Royce in the home run derby would be fun. Um, I always get cautious when they do the home run derby because they always it always seems to mess something up uh, somewhere down. The, I don't know. That's just my only. So who's the last? Who's the last twin that was in it? Morno. I think was Morno was the last one. Yeah. Um, but you know what? At 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 the the, the all star break, I think this team will be a game and a half out of first. The Guardians wow. will still be in first. Um, the Guardians are playing are, are are playing baseball that is it, it's good, but it's not um, sustainable. And and this is a team that even if they did finish first, I think they get swept. Okay, in, in that first round of the playoffs because I don't well, think they they're a good team. They don't have the pitching like they they did. You know, like. As far as like when whenever I thought of Cleveland, I was always worried about who they were going to throw at us. Even though it seemed like like tonight, like uh, uh, now he was a White Sox pitcher, but great pitcher uh, Cervalli, right? He's he's going, but well, he's one in four against the Twins. You know, there are a lot of a lot of Cleveland pitchers that own the rest of the league, but we would play them in Cleveland and 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 have the answer. So you know. It, it, it'll be interesting. Um, I, I, I would like to see them maintain some kind of consistency because that's what's bothered me about this team so much is that, okay, yeah, you beat Oakland four games and then you lose three games to the Devil Rays at home. You know what I mean? Like uh, that's, that's what's the most frustrating. And maybe with a consistent player like Royce Lewis showing up every, every day, it won't, it won't go that way. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. I, I, I think the consistency has been frustrating for everyone just with, you know, you go on this crazy win streak, then you go on a bad losing streak, then another win streak and another losing streak, and now we're on another win streak. So I, I think they're starting to piece some stuff together, but um, I, I still think this team wins a division at the end of the year. I truly do. Really? Yeah, That's I, I, I do. Um, I, I'm looking at the standings now too, and how bad is the National League? I mean, Goodness. Well, right, and but I mean, I'm I'm at this point, I'm just pleased to be five, only five and a half back from Cleveland, because the way that the Twins started the year and the way that Cleveland started the year, like we could very easily be ten or twelve games back, and to be five and a half back in bad. No, yeah, and it, it's it's easy striking distance right now. I mean, it and it, and the, the the teams under us currently in the wild card standings. I'm not even that that afraid of, I mean, you got Boston that's two and a half back and Toronto's five back, but look like these teams don't scare me. I think our team is better. Um, never would have thought the Royals would have still been nine games over 500 and, and right. Still, right. No, they're playing good ball. Uh, right. they, they are playing good ball. Um, Cause I even think Kansas city's better than Cleveland. Truthfully. Um, really? I, just, I, I just think Cleveland's been getting lucky. I, I really do. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But I, I you know, I think this is still a, I, I still think this is a good team. Um, but like I said, I, I was very optimistic of the pitching staff preseason. I mean, we've had podcasts where I was, I was talking very highly of it. Um, it worries me right now. I think the offense will be able to, to, to handle, especially if Royce and, and, and Carlos are in there every day, but um, the pitching is where I'm a little worried. Right. And you know, the thing about it, like, it, it seems like the twins are, are good, maybe going to hit their stride because everyone's healthy. Now the injury bug is going to take its toll on other teams, which could be Cleveland as well. And um, I just, you know, I, I did, I, I do watch Cleveland play like offensively. They don't look that great on paper. You well, know what I mean? So David Fry is one of your best hitters who, right? sorry, who, right. so, right. Okay. All right. Let, let's, you know, as, as long as we're, we're, we're going controversial. Um, I did want to ask you something and you know, I, some things I go back and forth on, I don't think I'm going to go back and forth on this, but um, I'm just curious as to your 
your opinion on it. And please, everybody, like when I bring this up, it doesn't have anything once again to do with black or white. It has to do with the integrity of certain certain things. And, and we'll get to that in a second. But um, now you noticed that Major League Baseball has uh, entered Negro League statistics into Major League Record Book, correct? Yeah. Your your thoughts on that? Because, well, go go ahead, because I, I've got plenty to say on this. Um, now, I only, I read that they're doing it. I don't know how they are, like, they're integrating it into as if it was the MLB or? Yes. So Ty Cobb is no longer the, okay, so th they're integrating those stats into Major League Baseball. I guess I... You know, I I don't know if I have a big issue with it because it happened a long time ago, so it really just doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect right really anyone on the planet right now. Um, hey, I know this is touchy. I know this. Yeah, is I, I know, and so I guess I don't really have an issue. But I guess it was a separate league, so right. I I, I disagree. Guess it was a I separate league for the reason of the what was going on during the time. Yeah. So. I, you know, I, again, I, I don't have an issue. I think it's different, but I, I do, I have an issue. I'm not saying that you don't recognize and, and you're right. It's what was going on did not cause these players to play in major league baseball, but yet they didn't play in major league baseball. And that's a, you know, I'm a stickler for the rules. I'm over 50, so I can be all right. But that, that's, that is my point is that, it it wasn't now my buddy brought up a, a good point and he was pro he thought it was the greatest idea but he said one thing that made sense he said you don't know how accurate the stat taking was in the negro leagues but but to me it doesn't matter one way or another it's the fact that the kansas city monarchs never played in the major leagues all right which meant that those players never played in the major league and i'm not saying that they could not have I'm not saying that it was it, it was terrible why they were not allowed to, but I don't see how you can you can combine those deals because if you do, and I know everyone's gonna shoot this down, but I, I want you to think about this. Now, what about poor Ichiro? Now he didn't get a contract because he had a play in Japan for a few years before. But think about if you combine, so now do we have to combine Ichiro stats in Japan? Now I know this is a completely different topic. Okay. But if we are just going to erase everything and just go, you know what? We're just going to make it up as we go along. Then why would you not enter Ichiro into major league baseball? It's because it's different as Japanese versus American baseball. Then, okay, I'll do you one better. And I want you to think about this. Ted Williams, it wasn't his fault that he had to go. He served not once, but twice in military service. Okay. And think about what his stats would be had he chose not to be a true American and go twice to fight <coughs> for his country. All right. Now I got a little passion for this, but you think about the time that he took off. It wasn't his fault that the Germans were assholes. It wasn't his fault that he was fighting the red Chinese or what they called it North Korea. All right. He chose to do that, but it took away from his game. So should we now just say, well, you know what? I think his stats would have been this had he been, I know that's a stretch, but why is it a stretch? It's a good point because now, I mean, as you were talking to, I was like, why wouldn't you just, celebrate the Negro league for what it was. Um, and just, and just leave it at that, I guess that now that, I mean, that's a good point. Like that's a really good point. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what the thought process was. I just read a headline that, that this was happening. Um, but I don't get, I guess I don't get why we need to. I, I agree now. Just to prove that I'm not an asshole, I will bring this up because I had this conversation with a good friend and we disagreed on this. And um, 
and as we got to talking, I, I said, and I guess I was unaware of this. Okay. So you understand that the Vikings played in the last AFL NFL Super Bowl, Super Bowl four, right against the Kansas city chiefs. And then after that, they merged the AFL with the NFL. And I, I got to plead ignorance. I, I had no idea. I was like, well, no, Chris, you can't say that the AFL stats were this because if you got to play the Houston Oilers, you play them twice a year in an AFL, which is a, a lesser league. And I'm not saying the Negro league was a lesser league I'm saying it was a different league. How could you play or, or count the stats? And I said, that would be stupid too. If we did that. And he looked it up and he was like, actually the AFL are included in NFL stats. I'm sorry. They're two different leagues. They're two absolutely different leagues. There's no way that AFL and I love golden Richards. Don't get me wrong. And I, I don't like Len Dawson, but I like the AFL. Okay. But there is no way that the AFL stats and their season stats or any postseason stats should be added to an NFL record book. And when I said, I was like, no, no, there's no way they did. No, I was wrong. He was right. It's the same thing. They are not the same leagues. And so you're, you're not doing, look, I'm sorry that that's not going to get more African Americans on a major league playing surface because you now have added these to the major league baseball record book. I'm sorry. It, it doesn't, it's, it's not. Well, right. And I guess now I think about it. I mean, it's like, you don't like if I played major league baseball from, you know, 2024 to 2025, and then I went and played independent ball from 26 to 27 and then came back to the MLB and, you know, for whatever, like you don't count my my independent league stats. No, because, because the whole player. argument is because they weren't allowed. You playing an independent ball, the reason you were doing that was because you weren't allowed to play in the major leagues because no one was interested in you. Everyone would have been interested in Satchel Page. I get that. But by adding them to the record, adding those stats to the record book, I don't think rights are wrong or or goes back in history and goes, okay, we're not. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not. Yes. You know, I love the Negro Baseball Hall of Fame unofficially in Kansas City. I've been there several times, and there is so much I appreciate about learning the history of that league. But they're not the same leagues, and that's the only point I'm making. And I'm not saying white's better, black's better, either one. I'm not saying it's a competition. I'm just saying they're different leagues. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the best way to put it. I think, I mean, like I, I just, I, maybe I need to do some more reading on what the thought process was is like, is it trying to right or wrong or, or what are we, what are we doing? Are we just doing it to do it? Are we just bored? Like, what are we doing? Right. Uh, last thing, because I brought up Ted Williams and if, for people that don't know what I was talking about, he took time off from his major league career to be a, to be a pilot in world war two and in the Korean, I'm sorry, we can't call it a war. It was a police state, I believe is what the government tells you. Uh, twice he took off his, his regular job of baseball, which he was pretty damn good at to be a pretty good fucking fighter pilot, which he was pretty good at as well. Okay. I brought this point up with, with one of my buddies and I was like, can you name one player in the modern day era that would actually take time off of baseball? Like if, if we were to go to war with, uh, oh, if we were to go to war with Bangladesh tomorrow, you know, and it was this big knockout drag out deal. Do you know of any baseball players that would sign up and go, no, I'm going to, I'm going to take off time playing baseball and go fight, fight a war. I think you may get one or two, one of those kind of rough country boys that, that want to fight for their country. I think you may get one or two, but not as much, not as much as you would have back in the day. I think where, cause there's a lot less. Uh, and the uh, money is different too. Yep. Yep. So why would you, you wouldn't put your life. I don't, I, and as I thought about it, because I got to give it to my boy perm. He said, no, there, there, there'd be guys, you know, and, and I'm thinking of, uh, oh, what was the, uh, what was the Cardinals defensive? Oh, Pat Tillman, 
who, you know, he got, he got killed. He was an NFL player, got killed in Afghanistan. What, okay. And I was like, all right. Yep. And I, I hear what you're saying. But as I reflected, the only person I could think of in major league baseball right now would be Royce Lewis. And, and you know what like, no, you, you get to take time off of playing baseball, but you get to f- fight the Germans once again. And this time we call world war three and he'd have a grin on his face and go, Oh, I get to, okay. I get to help my country. And I, you know, as, as long as everybody's winning here, you, that's the only guy I can think of. I, I was just going to say that him, or if I had to pick someone on the twins, my other pick uh, for whatever reason would be uh, Kyle farmer. He just gives I, me yep, that. I agree. Farm dog. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. All right. Well, uh, I don't think that we solved any of the world's problems. We did talk a little bit, you know, and like, I guess if folks are upset about what we talked about, um, you know, then, then please contact us and tell us what you're, what, what you're thinking. Nothing was said in, I guess, out, out, out of hatred or anything like that. It was just things that, and the bottom line is keep your fucking politics out of my sports. I did talk about it. We did talk about it tonight, but that's because they always rear their ugly head like communism. They always find a way of seeping in. And, and so we, we do need to talk about it, I, I would think. The, the time we stop talking about issues is when they've become too big, if that makes sense. Well said. Well said. All right. Well, uh, we have gone over the hour mark. Sorry, Steve. Uh, but we've been gone for three weeks. I believe we are going to do this on a regular basis now. I would, I mean, I got all the time in the world now. So um, yeah, as, long as, like as, long as, work, as long as work schedule, uh, it, it's not as consist- consistent as I would like it to, but we are, we are busy where I work. So we will, we will try to make it work. All right. Well, we got a lot to cover with the Olympics coming up. So, yeah. um, all right, buddy, uh, for Noah stores you're down in KC, I'm JV up in MSTP. Uh, We will see you next time on the Show Me Name Later podcast. Thank you for watching.